Hi, everyone. I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop, and today is Tuesday, October the 15th. And things are relatively quiet across the southeast United States these days. That's good news. And I'm going to take a look into the tropics this afternoon and this evening. Also, I want to take a look at the moon because this is a super full moon coming up this week, and that will be affecting the tides, which will be affecting our area. Also, I want to look at our great weather forecast. If you like autumn weather, it's going to be fantastic for that. And a lot of people have been asking me, when and where can I see Comet C2023A3, or commonly known as Tuchinchan Atlas Comet? Well, it's becoming somewhat visible now. We'll take a look at that as well. So let's go into the tropics first of all. And there we have an area of disturbed weather in the central tropical Atlantic Ocean, or another one in the Western Caribbean Sea. And uh, looking at that on the satellite imagery, there's that disturbance over here in the central Atlantic Ocean. It, it, it's not really well defined whatsoever. And I wouldn't lose any sleep over this at all. Over here in the uh, Caribbean Sea, uh, this disturbance here will be moving westward towards Central America, which could give Central America quite a bit of rain, but uh, will not be affecting us whatsoever. As you can see on the satellite imagery here, we have a lot of clear skies across Georgia, South Carolina, and northern portions of Florida. There is a front off to the north over into Kentucky, Tennessee. That's going to be pushing back through our area overnight, bringing some clouds, partly cloudy skies, but behind this, another punch of colder air coming on in. We're going to be dropping down into the middle 40s by the middle of this week. Well, Thursday night, or, or Wednesday night, Thursday morning. All right, let's go into the uh, uh, computer models and look at what's going on in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. And I don't see much going on whatsoever. Uh, looking at this map here of the uh, uh, southern Car or uh, the southern Atlantic uh, over in the uh, southwest Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico. There's that tropical wave over uh, coming in from the central Atlantic Ocean, uh, moving toward the upper portions of the Virgin Islands. Again, nothing to worry about. And there's that tropical wave over in the western Caribbean Sea, sea moving towards Central America. And it moves over Central America, producing quite a bit of rainfall across that area there. But our wave over here just kind of gets washed out and and uh, according to the GFS model, the American model, the global forecast system, it doesn't show much of anything developing across our region. However, the uh, Canadian model, the CMC, the Canada Meteorological Center, uh, shows the wave a little bit more intact and crossing into uh, the northern Caribbean Sea, just south of Cuba, remaining as a low pressure system, but it also keeps it moving toward the west and not affecting us whatsoever. But what is affecting us whatsoever is off to the north is high pressure over here. And high pressure is usually associated with giving us clear weather conditions and fair weather. And that's exactly what it's going to be giving us. However, it's going to be also producing a north to northeasterly flow of wind across the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina and more so along the east coast of Florida. Let's take a look at this map here uh, and uh, uh, it shows the uh, winds for the next couple of days uh, through um, Wednesday. Uh, not too bad coming in from the north-northwest as that uh, secondary front passes on through but then uh, as the high shifts a little bit further to the east, the winds become a little bit more north northeasterly coming down the Atlantic Ocean. This is for uh, well, 2 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, then going into Friday. Uh, we're seeing some uh, moderate to strong winds across the Atlantic Ocean. A weak, uh, a, a, a weak area of low pressure develops to a stronger area of low pressure off to the northwest, northeast of us. And that's going to continue to pump down uh, a northerly fetch of wind across the Atlantic Ocean, which in turn is going to start holding up the tide. Uh, that's not a, a going to allow the tide to go out. The tide will come in but it's going to have difficulty going back out. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. This is for uh, early in the morning on Friday, Friday afternoon. And Saturday, we're still seeing uh, those strong northerly fetches of wind across the coastal Atlantic uh, and the South Carolina area of Georgia and South Carolina into uh, the Florida. Florida has a little bit stronger uh, easterly winds, so the tidal effect there will be even more than what we're going to be seeing here. Speaking of that, let's look at the uh, tide effect. And right now, we're not seeing much of a uh, variance between the tide levels and the, the predicted levels and the actual levels. The red is the actual levels, and we're seeing only a, a, a tenth to a 
two tenths of a foot difference. In this case, it's actually negative. The tide is a little bit lower because we have a westerly component in the wind blowing the tide back out to sea. However, uh, as we progress through the week, here we are right now, and tide is almost exactly where it should be. Uh, we're going to see these high tides, particularly uh, in the morning cycles. Here we have it uh, for Thursday morning. Friday morning, and here we have it at 9.3 feet. This is without any additional uh, variances of the tide. Uh, this will be uh, as just from the sun and the moon gravitational effects. That in itself is going to be quite high, not high enough to flood. Flooding usually begins at around 9.3. 9.6 feet. That's where the marshes begin to overflow and, and the lagoons begin to fill up and begin to overflow. Uh, this is on Friday and then we're going into Saturday over here. Uh, we have uh, again uh, about the same height, 9.3, 9.4 feet. Uh, but the tide's going to be running at least a half foot higher, maybe a foot higher uh, than these predicted values. So we're looking at potential 10 foot tides. That will cause uh, flooding across the uh, marshes and the roads near the marshes. We call that uh, uh, full sun flooding or clear weather flooding. And uh, there'll be no storms, it's just the, the tide and the winds combining the two with the super moon. Here's the full moon coming up this week. It'll be full on the, uh, well, the night of the 16th, the uh, Wednesday night to th uh, the morning of the 17th, Thursday morning. So uh, Wednesday night and Thursday night, you'll see a super big full moon shining brightly uh, throughout the nighttime hours. And it's the hunter's moon, uh, the full moon in October. But anyway, this will be aggravating the tides, particularly on Thursday through um, Sunday mornings across um, uh, all of the southeast, uh, South Carolina, Georgia, and eastern Florida. I think it's going to be worse in eastern Florida, uh, particularly along the east coast. They could see substantial uh, clear weather flooding uh, uh, associated with these incoming tides. And looking at my tide calculator, there you see the values of the tide right in here in the morning hours. The afternoon tides, or the evening tides actually, will be high but not quite as high, about a half foot to seven tenths of a foot lower uh, than the morning high tides. But uh, on a Friday morning will be our highest high tide. Uh, we call these also king tides, uh, 9.4 feet. The moon will be at perigee um, tomorrow. Uh, that would be on Wednesday, uh, the, right before the full moon. So the full moon at perigee, and this is a close perigee, uh, 221,000 miles. The average distance from the Earth to the moon is, what, 239,000 miles. And when it's at apogee, or its furthest distance, it's about 252,000 miles away. Well, tomorrow night, it'll be only two. 121,000 miles away only. Yeah, but anyway, that's the, the case for the moon. All right, looking at the weather conditions, though, uh, for the next several days, uh, my website, savannapat.name, you can see uh, lots of clear weather conditions. And look at these low temperatures. And this is for coastal Georgia and southern South Carolina. Inland, it'll be a little bit more chilly uh, in the overnight hours. Uh, the high on Wednesday uh, is only in the middle 60s, low Wednesday night, 45 degrees. Uh, Thursday, high 67, low 47, and that's with sunshine. And it's going to become breezy on Thursday and breezy Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with that north northeasterly wind coming in off the Atlantic Ocean. All right, let's talk about the uh, comet uh, Tuchinchan Atlas. Uh, the comet is becoming somewhat visible. It's not going to be as bright as a lot of these reports have been leading you on to. Uh, you're going to probably need uh, binoculars or a small telescope to actually see the tail of the comet. You might see the core of the comet, but it's going to be very difficult. You're going to have to have a clear view of the western horizon. And right after sunset, uh, you should be able to see the uh, comet above where the sun sets. Now, don't look at the sky when the sun is setting it could hurt your eyes wait till the sun sets and if you have a again a clear view of the western evening sky you should be able to detect the comet perhaps uh, better with binoculars or a small telescope. Uh, the core itself is quite bright. It's about as bright as the star Polaris, the North Star, which is not the brightest star in the sky. That's the 80th brightest star in the sky, but it's a magnitude plus two. And the core of the comet will be somewhere around there, but the tail will be extending 
upward away from the comet and uh, you might be able to see that, particularly if you have binoculars uh, in the evening twilight. So the best time to view it is between now, tonight, through the 26th of October. Uh, as the comet goes further and further away from the Earth, it gets higher and higher up in the sky, makes it more easy to uh, to uh, uh, view it. However, it gets farther away, it gets dimmer in light, so it'll be dimming as it gets higher up in the sky. But uh, yeah. There you have it. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I'm making another video of what's up in the nighttime sky right for this channel here. Uh, my astronomy images from the uh, heavenly backyard. My I have two telescopes reset back up uh, looking into the sky. I have several features I want to show you. I'm anxious to show you. Hopefully, I'll have that video ready in a couple more days. So uh, stay tuned to my Pat's Weather and Nature channel. And with that, happy comet hunting and uh, enjoy the autumn weather. Get your pumpkin spice out ready because you're going to want it.